Sometimes a story is just a story, but more often than not, they are a lesson cloaked in entertainment. The stories I share here are definitely the latter. Some are fact, some are fiction, all are beneficial. Hello, my name is Earl Brian, and you are listening to The Leadership Chronicles. Today's story is about the Cliff Young Shuffle. The year is 1983. Runners are gathering in Sydney, Australia for the inaugural running of the Westfield Sydney to Melbourne Ultra Marathon. This race was set to cover a distance of 544 miles or 875 kilometers. Now, these folks weren't just any runners. They were the elite athletes of the day. They had the latest gear and a lot of support from sponsors. But you also had a crowd of also-rans, people who just wanted to run an ultra marathon to see how they could do. But even most of these people showed up fairly well prepared and in the best gear they could afford. All of them, that is, but one, Cliff Young. What are the things that set Cliff apart? Well, first of all, at age 61, he was more than twice as old as most of the other competitors. Second, He showed up in overalls and was wearing work boots to run in. The third thing was his running style, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, you can imagine somebody who stuck out that much would draw the attention of the crowd and the media. They all asked him a lot of questions, and some even made a few jokes at his expense. One person even flat out told him that he was crazy and wouldn't even finish the race. Cliff responded, Yes, I can. See, I grew up on a farm, and we couldn't afford horses or tractors. The whole time I was growing up, whenever storms would come in, I'd have to go out and round up the sheep. We had 2,000 sheep on 2,000 acres. Sometimes I'd have to run those sheep for two or three days, but I'd always catch them. I believe I can run this race. Well, that was a nice story, but didn't do much to convince folks, and the start of the race really seemed to affirm their thoughts. See, the other racers flat out left Cliff in the dust. They had nice form, long and effortless looking strides, and Cliff, well, his style was best described as a shuffle of his feet. He fell way behind rather quickly. Things were not looking good for old Cliffy, as some in the crowd were starting to call him. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't be until five days, 15 hours, and four minutes after the race began that old Cliffy would cross the finish line. There were no other runners there to greet him, however. Why? Because he would have to wait 10 hours for second place to show up. You heard me right. He would have to wait 10 hours for second place to show up. You see, not only did he finish almost two days faster than the previous record, but he finished a full 10 hours ahead of the next fastest runner, and there were only six runners out of the entire crowd that even finished the race. So how did Cliff pull this off? Did he cheat? Did he hop in a car and drive to the end? No, Cliff was able to run the event from beginning to end without stopping to sleep like the other competitors. In fact, He didn't even realize that that was an option. You see, most of the other runners had an adopted strategy of running 18 hours a day and then sleeping for six. Cliff didn't have that strategy. He just knew that he needed to get from point A to point B, and he needed to run to get there. And that's really the power of this story. By not conforming to the norms, by being willing to stand out and be different, and more importantly, By being willing to be okay with that, Cliff changed the world of running forever. Now, does that sound like a bold, cliche claim? Well, it's not. The Cliff Young Shuffle has become an adopted running technique by some of the top ultra-marathon runners because it's actually been shown to expend less energy. Now, did Cliff know that? No, he didn't. He was actually quoted as saying that while he was running, he had just imagined that he was back on the farm chasing down those sheep as a storm rolled in. So let me ask you these growth questions. Are you okay standing out, not conforming to adopted norms, and being disruptive in whatever business you are in? 
If not, why not? Leaders, are you encouraging your team to think this way, to rely on their strengths, and be innovative? How innovative could you be if people weren't telling you what you can't do? And why do you listen to these people in the first place? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The story of the Cliff Young Shuffle, some growth questions, and hopefully how they can improve you, your innovation, and your leadership. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Leadership Chronicles. To continue the discussion, find me on Twitter at Earl underscore Breon, Facebook at facebook.com slash layman leadership, all one word, or email me at podcast at earlbreon.com. 